everybody. Today we will be talking about money. How it changed its shape from barter so primitive to Bitcoin so advanced. So let's have a glimpse of this journey. Thousands of years ago, people realized a need for money when they wanted to trade goods for one another. Things like grains, cattle, jewelry, precious metals, etc. were hard to transport and had many other problems like being perishable and were not on the same value across the market. Because of these needs, money came into being. Before we proceed to digital currency, let's discuss what is money. Money is basically a token which symbolizes a value without being of that value. We can buy any service or product in exchange of this token. All our lives, this whole world runs on this symbol, money. In recent times, we know money in many forms. All countries have their own distinct currencies like euros, dollar, rupee, etc. And now with technological advancement and the internet, we are accustomed to a new kind of currency, plastic money, that was launched in 1950 but is an integral part of our lives today. ATM transactions, online transfers, use of debit and credit cards is a very common thing. Around 8 to 10 years back, a new kind of currency came into the market that changed the face of money as we knew it. Digital currency Digital currency had no physical symbol. It was just a number, just a code that could be sent over the internet as easily as you can send an email. Because of this ease, security and privacy, digital currency grew popular and a number of digital currencies came into the market. For example, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Darkcoin, Ethereum. There are around 600 types of digital currencies in the market at present. But there are only a few of these that have real value, which means that they can be exchanged for physical currency. The most famous one is Bitcoin. Now you might ask, why so? How is Bitcoin different from these 210 national currencies plus 600 digital currencies? Well, the answer is that all these other currencies are centralized, which means it is run by either a bank or a government or a company. That all your money is regulated by some people in power. Bitcoin whereas is decentralized. On January 3rd, 2009, Somebody by the allies of Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin. So nobody knows who this person is. Because Bitcoin, instead of being regulated by an institution or individual, is regulated by a set of mathematical algorithms. Moreover, Bitcoins are limited in number. From its invention in 2009 to 2140, only 21 million Bitcoins will be generated. The algorithms have the production of bitcoins every four years. As the supply decreases, the demand increases, the value of bitcoin increases too. Let us now have a look at how bitcoins are formed and how their value increases. With the launch of bitcoins in 2009, a free software was launched along with it to verify the transaction that took place for bitcoins. Some people downloaded and installed this software on their servers. Whenever any transaction took place, it came to any of these servers to be verified. 50 bitcoins that were generated in 10 minutes were distributed to these servers according to the number of transactions they verified. As people started getting bitcoins, the number of transactions increased, which in turn increased the number of verifications. By 2010, the number of transactions increased so much that these servers crashed. A few companies from US and China then developed and set up their huge ASIC servers with a capacity of 400 gigahertz that are used today to verify transactions. Crows of transactions take place daily on about half a million machines. And every transaction creates a fraction of a Bitcoin. These coins are legal in more than 48 countries. 
US, Canada, Europe, UAE, etc. have Bitcoin ATMs, where you can enter your digital wallet code and get actual currency. You can buy any service or product in exchange of Bitcoins. Big businesses like the Winklevoss brothers of the Facebook fame have invested millions of dollars in the Bitcoin and have said that the Bitcoin market is going to grow tenfold of what it is now in the future. The Bitcoin blockchain is public, it's transparent, so you can see the movement of Bitcoin. If I send you a Bitcoin, um, everyone can see at least that, it, that Bitcoin moved on the blockchain. So it may not be so anonymous. It, it definitely is not anon as anonymous as people make it out to be. Um, and it may, not, it may or may not be used by the Chinese in that way. I think one thing for sure is that when there's uncertainty in the macroeconomic environment, which we're seeing with the upcoming Brexit vote um, in the Chinese economy, people tend to favor assets that act like a store of value. Traditionally, that would be gold, and more recently we've seen people favoring Bitcoin, and in the month of May, it was less volatile than gold for oh, close to 30 days. Yeah, there is a Bloomberg News piece out just now, actually, on that point, that gold and Bitcoin have traded together yep. in, in anticipation of Brexit, and questioning whether now it is becoming a value repository. Rather than yeah, so we, we've actually been saying that for many years. We feel that the killer Bitcoin app is really a store of value, and it's starting to behave just like that. Here, this is a chart actually showing just what we were talking about, that Bitcoin is starting to move now with gold, gold right. which, which I take it, is that good news for you and what you're doing? I mean, it, it lines up with our thesis. Um, we think Bitcoin is a better gold. It's a gold 2.0. According to the predictions by finance gurus, Bitcoin's value will be highly appreciated by August 2016. That is around approximately $1,000. Bitcoin investment is a good source of income and a much profitable investment option for a growing economy like India. The success of any currency is in acceptability. If more number of people accept a particular standard and are willing to exchange goods and services, that stands as a currency. So that is why in economies where the uh, country's uh, say governance is weak, people would rather try to hold their assets in foreign currencies than in domestic currencies. So that is given. That is, the people want a system of exchange of a system which helps them in exchange of services. Now, right now, Bitcoin is a very innovative concept where. People come together in a peer-to-peer -to -peer network and agree on a certain standard and say this is what we will recognize as a payment system. So therefore, the question of regulation is when there is an interference of this digital currency and its operations in the digital world with the physical world. Mm. If there is no interaction between the two, I feel there is no need for any regulation at all. Right. So the question which has to be addressed now is, is Bitcoin a pure digital currency or is it a multi-society currency? Right. Bitcoin per se is an electronic document. And in India, we have by law recognized electronic documents. Therefore, I say that Bitcoin as a document has already got legal validity. The clash is whether Bitcoin clashes with the con uh, concept of notes issued by the central bank. So we learned how a Bitcoin's mine. What are its benefits and how is it a good investment option? Now let's learn that how we can benefit from it. Mr. Amit Bhardwaj, MD of Gain Bitcoin, is a well-known name in the Indian IT industry. Apart from 11 years of experience in IT companies like Infosys, Boeing, Verizon, etc., he also contributed to the development of the IRCTC e-ticketing app and co-founded Highcard, an e-commerce company. After years of in-depth research on Bitcoin, Mr. Bhardavad set up the first Bitcoin mining server in India. In 2012, for 30,000 rupees, this 400 gigahertz server needed three things for smooth running. 24 hours electricity, non-stop high-speed internet and 15 to 20 degree temperature to cool down the heat produced. Since it wasn't a profitable option to set up these servers in India due to these three factors, Gain Bitcoin tied up with a company in Beijing, China, where electricity and internet is cheap and the temperature is less. In one and a half years, the company has set up 10,000 servers in China. 
and they plan to set up 3 lakh servers in the next one and a half year with public investment. After set up, 3 to 4 percent is school expenses and 95 to 96 percent is minor output. For Bitcoin cloud mining, a minimum investment of one Bitcoin is required. You can buy one Bitcoin from any website, selling it and transfer it. This money is used to set up one server in China. This server verifies approximately 100 transactions per day, which generates a fraction of Bitcoin. These 100 transactions amount to approximately $100 and are generated and credited to your digital wallet in the form of Bitcoin. This means $45 a month, out of which the Chinese company takes their share of $15 and $30 is shared with Game Bitcoin Company. These servers need to be changed every one and a half years. Thus, the company enters into contract for 18 months. Every month, 0.1 Bitcoin is generated. That means 1.8 Bitcoin in 18 months. So you get 1.8 Bitcoins in return of the 1 Bitcoin mining contract. And when you consider the ever-increasing value of Bitcoin, this profit becomes more than double. So what are you waiting for? Start soon!